If you put your slow cooker away for the summer, it's time to bust it out of storage because it's not just a tool for delicious soups and stews or cozy comfort food in the wintertime. If you have watched my channel for a while, you already know this, but if you're new here, I have an affinity for my slow cookers. And yes, I said slow cookers plural because I have multiple slow cookers or as we call them here in the South adjacent crock pots. It's kind of like saying a tissue is a Kleenex or a soda is a Coke. It's just, <laughs> it's just what we refer to all slow cookers sometimes. So I use those terms interchangeably. And in the cooler months, I am using my slow cookers to make soups, stews, chilies, and also to cook meats, especially less expensive cuts of meat, to be tender and delicious. And while soup and chili isn't usually on the menu very often in the summertime, I do still use my slow cookers to make meat, especially things like shredded chicken, shredded pork, or a chuck roast, and then I will turn it into salads or turn it into wraps or use it to make delicious sandwiches, like the slow cooker French dip sandwiches that I actually made for a Super Bowl video back in February. Those make a great meal option here in the summer as well because I can just pair them with some chips and some fruit and have you know a really easy meal that doesn't heat up my kitchen. But there are so many other things that this handy dandy tool can do outside of what we would normally think of cooking in a crock pot. Did you know you can do a shrimp boil in a crock pot? I've done it before with shrimp and smoked sausage and corn on the cob and potatoes and seasonings like Old Bay. But instead of boiling it on the stove, I let it slow cook in the crock pot all day. And then I can actually just spread it out across a table that is lined with butcher block paper and we can eat it outside. It's a meal that my son still requests every single summer at some point. I'll see if I can hunt down a website that tells you how to do that and I'll leave it linked in the description box below for you. I am getting ready to prep some chicken legs for tonight's dinner. And actually a lot of things that you would sometimes think of cooking on a grill like hot dogs or foil packets, you can make those work in the slow cooker as well. And chicken legs or drumsticks, do you guys call them drumsticks or chicken legs? I always call them drumsticks but chicken legs or drumsticks, whatever you call them, they're absolutely delicious from the grill or from the smoker, but sometimes I just don't wanna stand out in the 100 degree heat and cook them that way. So instead, I use my slow cooker and then I don't have to sweat at the grill. <laughs> I actually have about five pounds of drumsticks. This is half of them. And I'm going to drizzle these with a little bit of olive oil and kind of rub that in on each of the drumsticks. And then I have a spice rub here that is two teaspoons each of chili powder, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and paprika. And I'm going to sprinkle about half of this mixture over the top and then rub that in. And then what I'm gonna do is just add the second layer of drumsticks on top of these and do the exact same thing. Pop the lid on and put this into my slow cooker and let it cook on low for six to seven hours. I'm also gonna sprinkle a little bit of this Auntie Nono's firecracker seasoning over the top because why not? I don't know, sounds like it would work really well with this. Before I get going on the rest of tonight's dinner, I need to unpack my box from Thrive Market, who is sponsoring today's video. Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery retailer on a mission to make healthy living affordable for everybody. With Thrive Market, you can shop from a selection of thousands of best-selling products that are priced below traditional retail. And because of Thrive Market's savings guarantee, if you find a lower price somewhere else, they'll match it. You can actually sort Thrive Market's website according to your dietary preferences. So if you wanna see products that are keto friendly, that are gluten free, that are vegan, that are vegetarian, you can do that. And they offer lots of different kinds of products. I mean, I keep buying snacks from them like these Kind Bars and these Good Pops. These were a favorite of the kids. And these Quinn pretzels are a new favorite as well. I buy a lot of pantry staples from Thrive as well, especially in their Thrive Market house brand, like these refried beans. I almost always get a couple of bags of pasta because pasta has been kind of hit or miss in my grocery stores. And canned goods, like tomato products, which I use all the time. 
They also offer lots of beverage options and this coffee duo has become a favorite of mine. It's the Califia Farms Cold Brew Concentrate and the Oat Barista Blend. And then these two, the Barista Oat Milk Cinnamon Dolce and the Oat Milk Original from Nut Pods, I actually got to add to my order for free because of a special they were running that day. But they also offer health and personal care products and household products like this rosy dishwasher detergent powder and the lemon scent. Thrive Market does use carbon neutral shipping, plus their packing materials are recyclable and everything in this box is a repurchase, meaning we like these items so much that I keep buying them. Right now, new members can get 30% off their first order plus a free gift worth up to $50 when you visit the link in the description box below or go to thrivemarket.com slash cmindymom and sign up for a membership. Thrive Market does offer a monthly membership fee option, but the best bank for your buck is to purchase an annual membership which makes it come out to just around five bucks per month don't forget to visit that link in the description box below thrivemarket.com slash cmindymom and when you sign up for a membership you're going to get 30 percent off your first order plus a free gift worth up to 50 dollars. and thank you so much to thrive market for sponsoring today's video one item i actually did not show because i already pulled it out of my box to use in last night's dinner was two pounds of basmati rice so let me show you what I made with that. Even if you don't have a rice cooker or a rice setting on your slow cooker like I do on my Instant Pot Aura, you can still do rice dishes in the crock pot and I'm going to show you how with just my regular crock pot tonight. So I have an open package of turkey smoked sausage that I like to use up in tonight's dinner and in perusing the rest of my refrigerator I also discovered that I have a red pepper and I have a yellow onion that is almost past its prime, so I definitely need to chop those up and use them. And I was starting to feel kind of a like jambalaya, sausage and rice type dish. And I remembered that I had some celery in the freezer. I had some celery that was about to go bad, so I chopped it all up and froze it and uh, stuck it in this Ziploc bag that I keep in the freezer. I have my veggies and my sausage chopped up here in my crock pot, and to that I added two bay leaves and about a teaspoon of tomato seasoning and also just a little bit of chicken broth base and now I am going to pour in about three cups of water and I'm gonna get this going on high this is actually a little trick I use whenever I'm getting started on a slow cooker recipe a little later in the day than I would like because even though it's a little harder than on the oven or the stove, it still isn't impossible to burn something in the slow cooker. So I prefer not to use the high setting if I can avoid it. I'm gonna let this cook on high for an hour and when the timer goes off, I'm gonna bump it down to low for the last hour and a half to two hours that it's cooking before we add our rice. This has been cooking on low for about two hours now after cooking on high for one hour. And now I'm going to add one and a half cups of rice. I'm using basmati rice. I'm gonna stir that in and also add just a little bit of salt and pepper. And then I'm gonna pop the lid back on and turn the temperature up to high again. And it should cook the rice in about 20 to 30 minutes. I'm just gonna keep an eye on it and watch for it to be absorbing all that liquid. Here it is. The rice cooked up beautifully in just about 25 minutes and then I just have a little side salad and some strawberries to go along with that. Really easy delicious dinner on this summer weeknight. I use my slow cookers to make pasta dishes all the time. The kinds of one pot recipes that I would normally do on the stove, if I make just a few minor adjustments, I can make a lot of those work in the crock pot as well. One of my favorites is a creamy ranch chicken spaghetti. It's super easy. I make it all year round. It only has a few ingredients and I will leave that one linked down below for you guys. Itchy nose. Makes me think of Bewitched. Did anybody ever watch that show? Is, Tabitha, isn't that the name of the little girl who she can't wiggle her nose, so she has to do this to make the magic happen? <laughs> anybody know what I'm talking about? I actually used my slow cooker to make spaghetti the other night, and I will often make spaghetti sauce in my slow cooker, especially if it's a night when we're gonna be eating in shifts and I wanna be able to keep that warm for a long time so people can make their plates whenever they want. But in the summertime, I will make the sauce in the crock pot, and then about 30 minutes before we are ready to eat, I will actually add the spaghetti and let it cook right there in the sauce. The adjustment I make to that is just to add extra liquid to the sauce when it's cooking so that the spaghetti has something to cook in whenever I add it. 
So in this case, I used a little bit of ground meat and then I added some homemade marinara or you could add just a jar of regular pasta sauce and a can of tomato paste plus two cans of water. I added a little bit of extra seasoning to mine, including a little bit of crushed red pepper flake. And then I added an additional one and a half cups or 12 ounces of water. Normally my water to pasta ratio is two to one whenever I am doing one pot recipes, but in the slow cooker, not as much of that moisture is going to evaporate out of the slow cooker. And because I was making spaghetti that night, I knew that there was already liquid from the sauce. So I went for a one to one ratio. So I let that sauce cook all together for about two to two and a half hours on low and then before we were ready to eat it I added in the spaghetti and just made sure that it was submerged in the sauce put the lid back on and let it cook for an additional 25 to 30 minutes and then it was ready to eat right there right out of the slow cooker I will admit that cooking pasta or pasta style dishes in a slow cooker is a little tricky and sometimes you have to try it a couple of times until you get it just right. But there are definitely some recipes out there that give you exact measurements and a jumping off point and you can keep kind of tweaking it until it comes out just the way that you want it. Did you know that you can make desserts in the slow cooker? You probably did know that. but. I was actually pretty late to the party on that one. And I have made fondues, dessert style fondues in the crock pot. I have also made a molten chocolate lava cake in the crock pot. And there are also lots of recipes out there for things like cobblers or fruit crisps. A lot of them are really simple recipes too that only require a few ingredients. I recently made some cookie bars in the crock pot as well. It was a salted caramel cookie bar and the recipe was really easy. It just used some very simple pantry staples to make a really easy dough and then you put half of the dough in the crock pot, you sprinkle some caramel bits over the top of that, and then you crumble the rest of the dough over the top and slow cook it for two to three hours. I will say that mine took a little longer than the recommended two to three hours cooking time. And I think maybe that was because I was using my Instant Pot or a slow cooker instead of my Crock-Pot brand slow cooker. But actually when I turned it off and just let the bar set up overnight, they came out perfect and they were delicious on their own or reheated in the microwave for about 20 seconds with a little bit of vanilla ice cream on top. I'll leave that recipe linked for you in the description box below. But there are also websites out there that will tell you how to use your crock pot to make coffee cake or banana bread. And speaking of making bread in the crock pot, I have heard of people using their slow cookers to bake bread before and I actually came across a website recently that showed you how to make rolls, dinner rolls, in your slow cooker. And I have been really wanting to try that out, but I'll admit I'm gonna take a little shortcut. I'm not gonna make a dough from scratch. I'm actually gonna use Rhodes rolls and I'm gonna let the slow cooker do the work of letting these thaw and rise and then cook in the slow cooker to go along with our chicken drumstick dinner tonight. And you're probably wondering what else we're gonna have to round out that dinner tonight. And I'm definitely gonna have a salad. I mean, it's summertime. So we're gonna have a nice cool salad with greens and with fresh vegetables and a little bit of ranch dressing, really easy to throw together. I'm also gonna make some potatoes. And I have shared before that the slow cooker can actually make baked potatoes and it can cook corn on the cob for you as well. But today I am going to make mashed potatoes in the crock pot. So I'm actually gonna cook the potatoes in the slow cooker and then we're gonna finish them up right in the crock pot as well. Let me show you how. I have about three pounds of russet potatoes that I peeled and then chopped into cubes here in another one of my slow cookers. This is my Instant Pot Aura slow cooker. And I actually wish that I had done the chicken legs in here and the potatoes in my regular crock pot brand slow cooker with the ceramic insert. And you'll see why here in a little bit. I'm still gonna make it happen, but if you have a ceramic insert crock pot, it's probably better to do the potatoes in that than something like this. But we're still gonna do it in here. I've got my potatoes in here and now I'm gonna add two teaspoons of garlic powder and one teaspoon of salt plus one and a half cups of water. And then I'm gonna pop the lid on and set it to slow cook on high and we'll come back to finish these mashed potatoes up later. My potatoes have been cooking on high for about three and a half hours, probably about three hours and 45 minutes. And they're definitely done. And I am just going to use this little tool right here to kind of mash them up. This is why I was saying I should have put them in my regular crock pot with the ceramic insert and put the chicken legs in here because in the Instant Pot Aura, this is a non-stick insert. And 
if I was using the ceramic insert, I could actually use my hand mixer to mix the potatoes up, but the hand mixer will, will totally destroy this nonstick insert, so I actually don't have a silicone potato masher, so we're just gonna use this. It'll be fine, the potatoes are nice and tender, so it's not gonna take very much to mash them up. Kinda like chunky mashed potatoes anyway, too. I gave my potatoes a rough mash, and now I'm going to add about half a cup of sour cream, a cup of grated cheese. This is just sort of the odds and ends from a few blocks that I had hanging out in the refrigerator. A little bit of milk, probably about a third of a cup. Stir that around a little bit. Ugh, yummy, 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 yummy. Little salt and pepper to taste. A good cook has to taste everything, right? Yum. So I am just going to pop the lid back on this. I'm just gonna put it on the warm setting. It does not need to cook anymore. So it will keep those potatoes nice and toasty until we are ready to eat them. I have another slow cooker out to try out cooking the dinner rolls in the crock pot. So I have my Rhodes rolls here and I ended up being able to fit 15 in. I wanna leave plenty of room for them to proof because these are still frozen. And based on what I have read, they should be able to thaw and proof in the crock pot on low after about an hour and 15 minutes. And then when that time is over, we will bump the heat up to high and they will bake for about an hour and 15 minutes and that should allow them to cook. This is actually a casserole shaped crock pot that I pull out to use from time to time. But when I read about cooking the dinner rolls in the crock pot, they were just using a regular standard like six or seven quart crock pot. You just wanna make sure you don't crowd your rolls. You want them to rise and proof until they touch, just like you would if you were making them the regular way. If you've ever made Rhodes rolls before, they give instructions for how to let them thaw and rise in the pan that you actually bake them in. So it's very similar. You just set it up in the crock pot and it takes a little bit longer because they're cooking slower. But again, I'm not firing up the oven to cook bread. And yes, I am giving my crock pots a workout for this one particular meal. <laughs> I don't expect somebody to recreate created exactly the way that I have. I'm just trying to show you all the different things that a slow cooker can do. I know that I'm a crazy person who has multiple slow cookers and that not everybody is like me. And some of it is occupational hazard since this is what I do for a living. But honestly, even before I had a channel, I did have multiple slow cookers and I often would be using more than one at a time, especially here in the summer when it's super hot outside. Okay, roll watch 2022, I can tell that they have definitely thawed out and started to rise. It's about 45 minutes into this hour and 15, hour and 30 minute initial phase. So I think now they're gonna expand much faster. Okay, it's only been 15 minutes since my last update and they have definitely doubled in size. I'm gonna give them just a few more minutes and we'll see they get just a little bit puffier before we start to bake them. They definitely look ready now, so I'm bumping this up to high and I'm gonna set the timer for an hour and check on them after that time. I cannot believe this worked. Mind officially blown, you guys. Okay, the chicken legs came out fantastic. I actually cheated just a little bit. I did turn on my oven. You don't have to do this, but to crisp up the tops of them, I put them onto a foil lined baking sheet and then I popped them under the broiler for about four minutes. And now the outside, the skin is nice and crispy and we've already tasted these and they are so fantastic. I have my salad here on the side, my mashed potatoes, which are delicious. And then my rolls, since I had the broiler on, I went ahead and just slid the parchment onto a cookie sheet and I popped those under the broiler for 60 seconds and the tops of them browned up nicely and those cooked beautifully. Like they're like completely cooked all the way through. Nice warm rolls to have with our dinner as well. Everybody is fixing their plate. They're very excited about this meal as you can hear from the noise that is happening all around me. I can't believe I almost forgot to share with you guys the pizza that I made in the crock pot. Yes, I made pizza in the crock pot. For the crock pot deep dish pizza, you are going to need some kind of fresh pizza dough. I made mine, but I cheated. I used my bread maker. It's one of the only things I use my bread maker for anymore. I use the dough setting and I just follow the recipe that came with the little booklet that came with the bread maker to make pizza dough. And it turns out great every single time. But you can use a different kind of fresh pizza dough if you wanna buy the kind that comes in like Pillsbury, the can. You may wanna buy two cans worth if you're wanting to make deep dish pizza. 
I think Trader Joe's and maybe Whole Foods, maybe some other grocery stores have pizza dough ready made that you can buy, but you're gonna need pizza dough. Some kind of sauce for your pizza. And I just made mine from a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes and I added a tablespoon of minced dried onion and then a teaspoon each of salt, Italian seasoning, and garlic powder. I also added just a little smidge of red pepper flake I put that in a bowl and stirred it all together and bada bing bada boom, I've got some pizza sauce. This is a lot, so if I end up not using some of it, I'll put it in a little container and pop it in the freezer for the next time I make pizza. It's mainly me and the kids who are going to be eating this, so I'm keeping it very simple. We're just gonna have pepperoni and cheese, but you can have some different toppings if you want. I like to cut my pepperonis up a little bit so that they're easier to spread out. And then I have some shredded mozzarella and some sliced provolone. The first thing I'm going to do is roll out this pizza dough to about the size of my crock pot, actually just a little bit bigger, and I'm gonna use the lid of my crock pot to gauge that. I'm also going to sprinkle just a little bit of cornmeal on both sides just to, you know, kind of give it that pizza crust feeling. My pizza crust is in the crock pot, and this is just a six or seven quart, I can't remember which, but a six or seven quart oval crock pot. It's not even a fancy one, it just has low, high, warm settings on it. And you can see that I kind of fold it over the edges to create a crust. And also, since I'm making this like a Chicago style deep dish, pizza, I wanted to have something that holds all of the toppings as well. So I'm actually going to layer the cheese and the pepperonis on the bottom, and I'll probably do two or maybe even three layers of those, and then I will put the tomato sauce on the top. Before I get this started cooking, there is one more thing that is recommended, and that is to take a layer of paper towels and put it over the top of the crock pot and underneath the lid. And that is so that the paper towels will actually absorb some of the moisture that releases from the food as it cooks. Because normally, when you're making meats or soups or stews, you want that moisture to stay in. But in this case, you don't want that moisture to fall back into the crock pot because it would make the crust soggy. So I'm going to set this to low, and it should take about four to four and a half hours to cook completely. Okay, you guys. I think this turned out amazing. Oh, this is one of those times when I wish we had smell-o-vision. <laughs> I've mentioned that before, it smells amazing. And look at how nice that crust cooked up. I'm gonna go ahead and just lift the parchment out. We'll see how it looks, we'll get it sliced up here. My mind is blown. Look at how good that turned out. It's got just a couple of little burnt spots right here, but that'll be really easy for me to work around. Like the rest of the crust is perfect. Look how like, look how thick that is. <laughs> that is really like a thick pan pizza. I hope you got some good ideas from this video and thank you again to Thrive Market for sponsoring it. Don't forget to give them a visit. Follow the link in the description box below and be sure to use my code to get 30% off your first order plus a free gift. Pick out one of these videos to watch next and I'll see you there. Blooper reel. <laughs> Arr, I cannot say this. <laughs> ah, nose itches.